Right, welcome back. This is the discussion version of um, Monogatari of Season Monster Season Episode 4. Let's jump into it, shall we? <laughs> I have a couple of things I want to note. We're probably not going to spend as much time discussing it this time around because I do feel like we already have said a lot of things in the main episode. Um, I just want to highlight a couple of things. We're going in with the Araragi. I do wonder why the Araragi is actually um, separated right here when we look at it um, initially, right? We have Ara, uh, no, Arara, and then we have Gi. I do wonder why that is the case. Great shot with like the the way the, the, um, the entrance, right? bends around Nadeko and how she like her entire face is in the dark it gives us this foreboding feeling just like I don't want to step over that threshold right um as we are going in we're flashing 2di in high detail which obviously is kind of just a peek into her soul I feel <laughs> um we talked about the whole peak in the main episode um there is a couple of other things um I do wonder how many times, how many times we have actually seen this staircase. Kind of insane if you think about it, right? How many times we have seen that one, we have seen Onoroki thrown down it in the beginning of like this season. We've seen Aragi being thrown down there as well as a part of that, but we're in front of Koyumi's door and this is the big one, right? She has to, to muster her courage here to actually really really get in there um and as we get in there i'm gonna jump the intro for a second as we get in there immediately we have that bam <laughs> right uh i love this moment i i mentioned it already with the eye ah uh, holy shit and we meet like wrath nautico we talked about how she represents that hate right that rejection that the rebellion, all of these things, the action, the activeness, the the the, the drive behind Nadeko, right? In both directions. Um, I just wanted to highlight, like, first of all, I do love the, these stylizations, right? The way she's like paper cut. Um, it it looks amazing, right? Almost like a drawn manga, obviously, since we do, uh, since they came from the manga pages. And she's spewing fire like a dragon, like <laughs> something you'd expect out of like, I don't know, Freerun or, or Dragon Maid or whatever. Um, I hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. Sodachi, is that you? <laughs> uh, speaking of Sodachi. Um, yeah, but I do love how she's being displayed in this entire thing here. Almost like Medusa, right? Like the, the, the flowing hairs of like the, the snakes and whatnot. She's like a like a reptile, her entire teeth, they're sharp, her mouth is like, has edges instead of like being round or, or smooth. Um, every time she flashes on screen, we have quick flashes that are like sharp, right? Sharp edges, the, the, like the, the little splinter through the eye that we often use, like the glint through the eye that we use to express like intensity of emotion. Um, the entire scene is in red. So we do have all of that combined to, to create this atmosphere, this feelings, uh, these, these feelings. Um, we talked about this before, right? The different, the different stages of unhingedness, basically, or of impulsive control on Nadeko. Um, that is also a great, great, um, uh, a great panel. Um, to look at with like the, the very simple but also very effective in displaying exactly what we want to display um and she doesn't believe her right she doesn't have that trust she has that complete rejection of everything that's going on here we do play with the sniper um atmosphere but again we, we already mentioned that i did want to highlight these crazed eyes which is very interesting because i can't put down what i write there is a feeling that gets evoked for me when i see this right almost like nadeko is um how do you say insecure and in a daze like come here now come on come on right almost like she's losing control of the situation any second and wants to contain it at a any possible method um 
and that is so something that comes across to your op um, to your opposite, right? To the other person you're speaking to. It comes across and you realize that this person doesn't have the situation under control. It can escalate things further because you do feel like somebody is trying to keep you under control who has no idea what they're talking about. So you do you do suddenly think, what what do they know, right? Right? You have the feeling you're they're trying to get you cornered despite themselves not having control. And I feel like when you're interacting with somebody who is emotionally unstable, who is impulsive, that can easily turn into somebody exploding out, right? And the answer is hostile, right? As we see, like, she, she's coming closer, and I do love how, how we are zooming in with the hands, right? Almost the hands are getting bigger and bigger, and she's, like, she's, like, grabbing, and, and like... She's throwing the chisel and getting out another one, almost like a like a karambit or a knife. Uh, and then, wait, wait, let me just because that panel was absolutely amazing. Let me just pick that up here. Getting out the other chisel, right? And then it flashes very quickly, and she's holding it like a like a knife, like a combat knife or something. And then we we go on this like gray red. Uh, opposing color scheme kind of thing and she's coming in almost like she's exercising here her she, again she looks so much like Tsuki in a lot of these shots which is very interesting but yeah even with the, like the kimono and whatever but she's going in with the with the like the dying hit and I again I love uh, what we're doing in this episode with the eyes because uh, there's a decent amount of shots where where dangerous objects or similar things are, are shown in the eyes of, of current Nariko and she barely escapes these and this this is kind of also a metaphor for barely getting getting away from, from these emotions, right? Or these parts, your char characteristics of yourself overwhelming you, right? Because this is a fight of ideals but also of characteristics in a way. It's a fight of um, of control over who you are and who you want to be. It's interesting also how we're framed differently, right? Um, our, our current Nadeko is half in the light, half in the dark, uh, barely evading, and our like attacking Nadeko, Raf Nadeko, is entirely within like the like the light that is coming through the window, right in the crosshairs, basically, just perfectly framed in there. And this is an insane transition, like like the last one with the other Nadeko. We we do continuously have these amazing transition from like Kurnadeko transitioning into the other Nadeko, into the Shigigami, into the other the, or the other way around, right? And it's just absolutely gorgeous to look at, I feel. Um Next thing I wanted to talk about was do, 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 do. Apologies that this is just me kind of rambling on. I don't have a theme right now this episode. I don't really have a strong thing where I'm like, yeah, I want to dig deep into that. It's more like a a couple of really interesting and cool stuff um, that is loosely connected to to one another. Um, we have at 444, uh, we talk about, right, she's hiding behind a chair, which is almost like a child hiding behind a chair, right? Um, yeah, this amazing thing where she's just losing control. We go into yellow and her face looks so so contorted, so ugly in that second. And then we um we move over to, to like a blue, right? A blue sheen. And then we go into the green and we're she's stepping on us, yeah. <laughs> Some of people will like this. Step on me, not a go. But um anyway, yeah. And we're driving the point home, right? It's kind of just that the shoe drops, basically. You know the, the saying, the shoe drops, and this is literally that in this second. And she's going, she's going in, but Nadeko keep, right? She, um, she carries her resolve, right? She, she, and, and, and goes forward and, and tries to tackle this situation. But it's insane how much she's just, steadfast right Rav Nadeko is steadfast in this in this defend defense but she's too focused on her own emotions on her own wrath and whatever and this is how Nadeko ultimately gets her because this is like first of all holy shit this is fucking painful if you've ever like these shoes these shoes are thick right they're hard 
this is gonna, <laughs> this can break an ankle. So, ouch. But also, shut up, you rest instead. Reluctantly putting in effort. And we had that, right? This, this idea of like, yeah, I'm putting in effort. But is it just posing, right? We, you do have that theme in ReZero as well. A uh, shout out to anybody who's seen ReZero. But yeah, like, you're reluctant. You're very reluctant in putting it in. Isn't it better to, to just leave it be and do what you want to do or do what you feel like? Again, fighting with yourself because you are your worst enemy. Um, but Nadeko is using that. And this is a very great fake out with like the paper and whatnot. And we do have the swimming theme in the background and later on it will make more sense with the swimsuit and whatnot. Um, it's interesting how um, how Nadeko actually wraps this up and is like... Um, these, these shots are amazing, right? With the chisel, right? Which, where we do see like the way a chisel works on, on, on wood. It's just scraping off. Um, and I guess in a sense that is what happened here, right? Like Raph Nadeko was scraping off another layer of Nadeko. We're getting like, we're chiseling her out. That is also what you can call development, right? If you have a sculpture or something, you're chiseling it out until it looks perfect. It's exactly the shape you want it to be. It's a work of art. Um, and now we have to cut, and it's like, these words are cutting deeper than than what I could, right? That I'm only reluctantly putting in effort, that I'm not really giving in my all. Sharper and deeper than any chisel could. And we do have that cut-off head um, symbology right here, especially with the perfectly framed, again, light out of the window, where we do have, like, that triangle above her head and no part of Nadeko is in the dark but she's split in half here right she's almost getting killed by the words in in this sense right and then her her statue slumps in in contemplation and self-doubt her Nadeko can't be depressed forever right I need to I need to move on I have to there's a call for action here and she's, she's removing all the chisel as well, since she's drawn and she can take it back, right? And then she's like, I'll have my self-centered friend Tsukihi explain it all later. Interesting. Interesting. Or she's calling her self-centered, which she is, right? Because we know her, we know, right? But Nadeko knows her as well, very, very well, very deeply. Interesting how she's calling her, her my self-centered friend. Two more left to go, and we get an outfit change, which is absolutely cool. Um, I do love that we're that we're using this as like like a, a next step, right? A sim a symbol basically for how she develops from like kind of hikikomori, like pajamas, whatever shirt, Nadeko into hey, this is I look like. Kind of like an artist, right? Like how you would imagine a stereotypical artist. Uh, some kind of fancy, fashionable clothes that, that fit your style, kind of, right? And then like a cap. It's very artsy, French-ish. <laughs> this this moment, I'm like, what the fuck, Nadeko? What are you doing? You're answering the fucking phone. Uh, like, or the, the speaker on, on, like, a house that you shouldn't be in. You're like, hey, hello, I'm committing a crime. <laughs> Like, like somebody robbing a place, and then the the the, door, the doorbell rings, and they're like, "Hey, hello." Well, I'm I'm not here. The the, the owner's unfortunately the owner isn't here, but uh, but and I can't help you either. I'm just breaking in here, man. <laughs> like, holy fuck! That moment, she's like, "Holy shit, what am I doing?" And she's running completely through the door, which is, by the way, funny enough. First of all, oh, please, Sanjo, please, Sanjo. I want more Sanjo, please. I want more Sanjo. Please. Please. Please, Shaft. Do me the favor. Like, this this wasn't enough. This is like, it's like an absolute tease, okay? Like, I mean, I'm gonna frame this, but... <laughs> please. please. 
Um, uh, that being said, <clears throat> that being said, we do have actually a scene that almost parrots this uh, Araragi runs out of the house and through the door scene, right? That we had in, uh, I don't even know where it was that we had that scene in, but I know that scene exists. I also know that scene exists in Kizu. Where he's like pent up and he's uh, he's like getting getting a magazine, but before after that there's also a scene that exists. But this is insane how it splits from the from the wall and it creates like that and she's running into the frame, like into the screen. Through the door, we don't even see Senju. She leaves the bike behind, which is very important, very important. Huh? And she's just making a run for it. And this sequence, this reminds me of Sangatsu no Lion. That is insane, right? Sangatsu no Lion moment right here. Like, you remember, like, Sangatsu no Lion, uh, season one, episode 10. I'm not going to spoil it, but if you've seen the moment, you know the moment, right? But this is here, like, this is a panic sequence. This is like, holy shit, raw emotion. Uh, all of the perception is reduced to the bare minimum of shapes and, and like, like uh, contrast. There is, there's shaking. Everything is shaking. You don't have compensation or anything. And that is that is absolutely beautiful because it completely perfectly displays how you feel and how you perceive things if you are in a state of mind like this panic um anger right emotional outburst just pure energy adrenaline flowing through your veins and this is i mean this is a shaft staple at this point but yeah but she catches herself. Also, you remember these things. Like, I remember these things. Like, uh, one of the uh, playgrounds when I used to be uh, a kid or teenage uh, and teenager used to have one of these. And that was one of the coolest things that we had there. Just really neat that you have, like, like almost an airplane. Yeah, it is an airplane kind of shape. Also, wanted to highlight this. Nisio is in. This you easy do in a drive-by, like holy shit, dude. In a white car, like an old-timer. I'm kind of like surprised he didn't crash. <laughs> like in the, in the Kizu, I think it was the Kizo episode one, right? Um, oh, what was it? Uh, Senketsuhen or Tenketsuhen? Uh, I don't know anymore. I don't know anymore. I'm not that good at Japanese, okay? Forgive me. Um... I'm going down the path, we're, right? We're moving to the next possible location. Again, great shadow work, the symmetry, slight asymmetry here, but it's it's very symmetrical, very neat. Um, I did think this was not um, not a co actually, but it um, ba -ba 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 -ba, it was, All right? So maybe it's the haircut that that kind of threw me off because it looks very different, and we we adopted the shoes of like Raf Nadeko. Very interesting how we're keep incorporating a p or in a way i don't know about seductive nautica we we have to check that but how we keep incorporating parts of the the um, parts of the personas that we are reintegrating into ourselves uh while we go along and yeah we meet we meet ononoki i was like first i saw just saw the shoe i was like oh ononoki's here and like what wait wait what is happening and he's just completely fucking, absolutely, um, um, how do you call that? Minced uh, meat, basically. And Nadoka thinks she actually died, which is insane. But yeah, great moment. I think it's, in, but this outfit is very interesting. Like when you have like the, the, almost like the, um, the pants in front and like, but but the skirt in the back it's very okay I, this is an interesting outfit i mean i guess it it keeps like in line with what nadeko represents at this point in time she's becoming more and more artsy and more and more outgoing but at the same time she's not cute nadeko so but she still has that part of herself integrated integrated into herself i guess this is this would be the part camisole of like the seductive nautico that she integrated into herself in this specific case we have onoroku being smush smush you smush you smush you and you're like not my fault what do you want 
But yeah, we, we have a talk and I think it's very interesting to get to know these things. Also very funny that I stopped on this frame because it's a really cool frame. Nadeko head being cut off in the frame while Ononoki is just the head without anything else. That is a cool frame. Nice that I actually noticed that. Um, yeah, 1045 you actually have something that I find very cool, which is like you can clearly see how the oop, hand um, Cool shot, cool shot. You can see how the layers are, right? We have three layers. Outside layer, part of Ononoki, funnily enough. Um, and all of these little, right, the fences and whatnot. Then we have the tree with the main, with the, like, the, the main uh, space where things are taking place. And behind that, we have the bamboo trees. And all of these are m moving at different paces past one another. So you have three layers of this scene. And we, we keep playing with the like the headless imagery and all of that. Um, how do you call a headless uh, rider or a headless like creature again? I think there's a specific like um, specific term for it in Japan. I I don't quite know. Remember that. Ah uh, yeah yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess she 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 has a little bit of a disadvantage of being a doll, like being have uh, having to be put together again, and she can't do it herself, like Buggy the Clown. Um, at the same time, right? If she was Araragi, she would be poisoned. So, in in that sense, maybe she was the lucky one after all. I do love how, hey, holy shit! Like Hachiguji is keeping this place up. Like holy shit, does that look beautiful with all that like the the bonsai kind of deal. Right, the, the very spiritual thing. Um, of course, yeah, and we're playing with the shadows, which is amazing. I, I do think it's it's absolutely beautiful how we are playing with the sense of scale and shadows with every episode of Monogatari. Um, this is definitely, I think this is not my favorite episode of Monogatari uh, off-season monster season. That was the last one, but... Oikura has had to beat, right? So that he is just uh, the, the joker that, that we needed. And this one was exposition heavy. While that is great to, to get to know more about the, the world and how it works and the mechanisms and whatnot, it is also not something that impresses and wows you the same way that some emotional moments do and, and other things. Um, yeah, um, we do have that little thing about Nadeko's name, interestingly enough. Boku Nadeko. Boku Ark. Nadeko, right? We, we talked about this. She and her manga brain, holy shit, she's falling in love with Ononoki. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit. Stop! Stop, girl. You have enough problems as it is. You don't need a Shikigami lover, okay? Um, but yeah. This frame is still insane. She looks so elf-like in this one, like Ononoki. With like the, I uh, never really noticed how how uh, pointy her ears are actually, how pointy and long. It's very cool um, to to see. Right, this, I, I looked that up. There is no clear um, logic for me on this. It, I guess it's a simple joke about flipping the, um, flipping the, the kanji and it not making sense. The only thing I got when I flipped the kanjis directly was like um, her name, Sengoku Nadeko, um, right? I guess we here we do have Nadeko Sengoku, um, but it's wait no it's Sengoku Nadeko right the way the kanji are written it's Sengoku Nadeko. Uh, we do have um, Sen which is thousand. Uh, Goku seems to be stone in a way. Um, then we do have n Na yeah Na and then we have De no no we have Nade and then we have Ko. Ko means child. Um, Nade would be petting or caressing or caress, which would be thousand stone petting child or a thousand stone caressing child. Not sure what it means in a way. Um, but if you turn it around, it would be it would mean child caressing stone thousand, which I'm like, eh, I don't know. Child caressing sounds weird, right? But I don't know if that translates one to one in Japanese and if it's if that is the pun, or if the the only pun is just, I'm gonna turn your name around, right? Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, 
she doesn't like how she's getting scolded, which I can see, I can see, right? I do love how we use the green for, for the god Nautico sequences, to be honest, because this is really um, as green as in poison and snake, right? That makes perfect sense to me, right? Poisonous and and green is kind of giving everything also this kind of unholy and creepy feeling. I do feel like a lot of horror um, comics and anime and whatnot are using green as background for an atmosphere that is kind of scary. Um, so that kind of is in line with what I um, what I would expect. Also, um, what is this, Nadiko? Why are you showing no, 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 your ass? What do you mean? What are you doing with that pose? Stop, stop posing. Stop with this, stop with this romantic arc here. It, it, you're distracting yourself. You have enough problem as it, problems as it is. And we talk about the swimsuit and, and of course Nautico's mind goes to a micro bikini. What the fuck? Girl, you're watching too many hands. <laughs> um, and yeah, this is literally, I wanted to point that out. This is literally a Sangatsu no Lion moment. This is a Sangatsu moment. Holy shit, that is one-to-one -one Sangatsu face. Like, I, I remember, like, Hina, Momo, whatever. They are all, all the time they made these faces. So yeah, this is literally a Sangatsu shout-out. Um, I also love how we... Um, uh, let me see. Because she was like, she's following Sengoku. Um, the thing is... No, no, we, we had that before, I guess. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, da -da -da. It's a second. So annoying. Yeah, right here. How we're indirectly implying that she's actually aware of being followed, right? That she's being tailed. Because she is walking and she's looking into the mirror. And in the mirror, she actually sees Ononoki behind her. So it's implied that she already knows that she's being followed. And she's just playing along, which... Great. Great visual metaphor here. Um, it's also very interesting how we're... This one, this one, Otori, right? Like Otori Monogatari, which is uh, Nadeko Medusa, uh, like, or contains the Nadeko Medusa arc. Perfect, right? Decoy story, decoy, Otori, it all comes back, it's all the circle, it all rhymes. And, right, here, here we go. God, snake, decoy, whatever. Um... What is it about Shikigami being used by another? You need to tell me that, right? I I didn't... I don't know what it is, right? Um, I, the only Shikigami I know from, like, the mainline series is Ononoki, right? I mean, we do have oddities everywhere. Um, but Aragi isn't an oddity. Hanekawa isn't an... Uh, no, Aragi isn't a Shikigami. Hanekawa isn't Shikigami, Tadatsuro might be, Kaiki, um, the other ones are just specialists. Uh, we do have Shinobu, who isn't a Shikigami. We do have um, the tiger and all of the other things. Uh, we do have the monkey. Is I don't think it's a Shikigami. It's more like, like right? The Shikigami is a corpse that was once, right? That, that died and then was uh, raised again as like a puppet. And that is only Ononoki. So which Shikigami has been using Ononoki? Right? Makes no sense. Also, uh, I think, like, it's very funny to me. I might have to blend this out. I, I don't know if, what YouTube is going to say, but... She's like, whichever the first one uh, was the first one is quite the perverted one. I'm like, you're saying this, first of all, as if they're different people. <laughs> and second of all, as if one of the other is, 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 is more perverse than the other. Like, what is more perverse, going from bloomers to swimsuit or going from swimsuit to bloomers? Both of that is stupid, right? So uh, I don't know what you what you mean exactly by that. Um, yeah. Um, 1553 I also had, which was uh, the do... Uh, yeah, this one, this is an amazing frame. I love that, right? Her just in, in her thinking pose and just <laughs> Ononoki, <laughs> Ononoki's leg being right there and then basically making an arc, which is, I don't know. I don't know why I like it, but I love it. I love that pose, honestly. And we're pointing out the outfit change. Um, don't flatter yourself acting so modest. How despicable. She's like, don't don't purposefully 
avoid bragging, right? If you feel like bragging, because this is what Nautico said like two seconds ago. She was like, I need to be sure not to brag. Um, because she's kind of a little bit proud of herself, and I agree, right? Also, her point of view, Keck W, um, not, not my creation, by the way. I saw this in the Discord. I was like, hey, what are you talking about, right? But I'm pretty sure this is the frame they meant. I'm pretty sure this is the frame they meant. So shout out to the Discord. You know who you are. Um, yeah. Yeah, and we, like, this This was also an interesting, like, wordplay with the DFI. We do have um, Evolve, which is Shinka, and DFI, which is Shinka. I, I looked that up, and um, the first one of these, like the this kanji is Suzume, we, uh, or Suzumu, which means continue. Um, the second one is Ka, which means tr in this case, like this this version of Ka is transformation. Um, and then the second one, we actually do have um, Kami or Shin, right? Also Shin. Um, Susumu is also Shin, right? Because we do have different pronunciations. We always have like the on and the, um, uh, oh, I don't even know how it's, how it's called anymore. We do have different kinds of pronunciations, uh, for the same kanji, um, depending on the combination of kanji. So we do have another Shin in this case, but also a Kami, it's the same thing, which means God and Ka, which is the same as you see, this is the same kanji. Uh, which means transformation, right? God transformation, deification, or apotheosis. Um, and here we have like evolution, the first one, which is continue transformation, right? A conti like a transformation and a continuation, which is evolution in this sense. Um, amazing frame, right? With the two Medusas. Uh, we do have our second outfit change, which is amazing yeah she's afraid that they might and and ononoki kind of proven that she or at the very least she and gain might be of the opinion that if somebody is not hostile to you you can use them right that is gain's opinion and ononoki might have more of an emotional connection here where she's like i don't want them to die right if they don't have to right i i'll do what i have to if i need to but like with Tsukihi, she's like, they don't need to die here. Um, which kind of reveals, strangely enough, uh, the dead corpse's humanity. Uh, yeah. Um, 1803. What did I note down here? 1803. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, what the hell are you doing, Nadeko? Like, what is this pose? What do you... <laughs> Stop. Stop abusing Onoroki's body, okay? S stop it. Stop it. I uh, I do not approve of this. Um, also, this one is insane. This shot, like, visually, as an imagery, is insane than playing Cat's Cradle together. I don't know what the clear implica implication of that is, but it has, like, it leaves an impact on me, especially with the way this entire thing is framed with the black and gold. And we do have the same when we're, like, a couple of seconds later with, like, the arches, like, the, the, the shrine arches, and everything is in black and gold. It almost feels, like, deified, right? In, like, like a... Right? In a godly kind of way, almost. Almost, like, out, out of, like, like, some religious book or something that is way way too old to remember who wrote it um and it makes sense right this idea of nadako possibly taking over um we had that before right it makes sense especially if both of them are kind of the same thematically and i do feel like that is could be the case in this specific um case maybe they're all kind of similar th thematically but i do feel like for example when we um, extrapolate from the Nadakos we've already seen, which is like Graf Nadako and Seductive Nadako, they had very much overlapping themes. Um, all of them have a general overlapping theme of like the things that Nadako has to overcome in order to, to develop as a person and get where she wants to get. But um, I do feel like the two that we already had had an overlapping theme. And now the two that are ahead that are about to come might have strongly overlapping themes so it makes sense that maybe one of them takes over the other in terms of like just 
assimilates them in terms of their nature, right? So suddenly you do have two of them which are kind of in line with the same thing because one of them is not as strongly willed, right? They, they, she's, not, she's always kind of just letting herself be instrumentalized almost. That was her thing as Mik Nadako, that she's being instrumentalized by other people and she's letting them do it in order to get her peace of mind to actually fulfill their expectations and maybe have an easy life. I don't know if that's the, the, the base um, underlying um, the underlying motive that she has an easy life, but at the very least, she's trying to not show opposition in that way and, and play along with people's expectations, which then makes sense that God Nautico would be able to take that over. Um, and I would, like, I don't want to know how... Um, Raf Nadeko, who can take over possibly in Seductive Nadeko, merging would create an insane monstrosity that, that on at one hand is manipulative and fake as fuck, right? And on the other hand can just shelve it out whenever she feels like it, right? Um, kind of have that mental strength and that physical strength to actually right dominate in any situation that would be a psycho like a, a psycho yeah that would be kind of a psychopath right or yeah um somebody with anti-social anti-social uh personality disorder or something who's just weaseling their way through life and just dominating and getting whatever they want by either right either temptation or by force And last frame I think that I want to highlight is um, this one. We're starting to talk about Hachikuchi in the moment when we show the snail, which is absolutely brilliant. Again, like the timing in which we combine the visuals and and the the actual things that are being set, the semantics, and uh, in addition to that, oftentimes also the background music and the mood is impeccable in this series um showing a lot of spirals right with the spiral staircase with the spiral water and then the spirals above hajikuji as the forces bending around her as a god basically we do have that little video game reference and and at last we're teaching people what kanji mean right hand i you see it here first um and we have completed the the second outfit change and when the shadow of the tree, right, kind of like still in the shadow of the sun, kind of um, conspiring underneath it, basically. But yeah, this is where, like, especially look at the nostrils. Holy shit. But yeah, you are not alone. Yeah, you're three times more now that you have reintegrated these parts of yourself. Ononoki with the line drop and Nadako with the realization and now she's like, I, I can do this. And I do hope she can do it, right? I do hope this is what we're, we're working towards um, because it would be great. Yeah, um, not that much to talk about. Also, like I said, not my favorite episode by far. Um, probably my second favorite episode though. Um, episode one of Nadeko Draw was, was kind of like an initiation into the thing, right? Uh, and we had um, we had Tsukihi Andu, which, uh, in my opinion, was more of like a drop of like, yeah, there you go, one-time story, Monogatari is back. And that's nice, right? To not have that in between those, right? Have that in episode three or something, drop in the Tsukiyu thing, but but shove it back and be like, okay, here, cool, we we got it, we still got it, right? Look look at us, and then going back and like leaving people even kind of wondering what's gonna come, right? Uh, kind of foreshadowing a couple of things, and then with Nadeko draw one going in and being like, this is our arc, and then Nadeko do is is the best one so far in my opinion the angles the themes all of the the amazing like the, the characters coming back it's amazing and this one is kind of the second best in my opinion but also we had a lot of exposition um and despite all of the amazing cool shots and the word puns and all of that there is still like it doesn't quite reach the level of episode two for me um 
but that doesn't worry me at all because I'm pretty sure that now that it's gonna ramp back up and we're gonna be um, back in action for episode four. Um, and it's not like this episode was bad in any way or boring for me. It was still gripping. It was still visually amazingly interesting. It was still everything I wanted it to be. It's just episode two was better. <laughs> but yeah, um, Monogatari off season monster season episode four. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, uh, leave me a like and subscribe. Uh, uh, check out the, the, the Patreon if you want to or the Discord um, or both. Um, we should be probably ramping up um, early access uh, again for uh, next week or the, the week after and we're getting back into the groove um, at the moment I think plan wise we got like monster on offer and Jujutsu Kaisen which is gonna come soon ish um, we got a little bit of spice and wolf in there right we got the finale of Bocchi the Rock um, episode 12 of Bocchi the Rock um, on YouTube uh, for yeah for end of this week start of next week and we got <clears throat> we got um long term technolize coming up um as like mid late august entry which is going to probably be biweekly in rotation with monster and I'm going to make sure that maybe I'll whenever I can I'm doing two episodes a piece uh and we'll look into that and see how how that is and if that is cool uh yeah uh and stick around generally for for all the amazing stuff that's about to come Resira is gonna drop at some point this year so we're gonna get into that action as well hopefully um yeah and i'll be seeing you next time <laughs>